I'm going to turn it over to Udgosh. All right. When do you know when you are on the Agile or Waterfall project? Now offer some answers. If you have a private office, you may be on Waterfall project. If you have a shared office, then you may be on Agile project. Specifically, if you are on the shared office, which is called Hive, and it has plush sofas and large TVs, you may be on CDCR's Agile project. One more time. When do you know you are on Agile or Waterfall project? If you're on the same project for the last 10 years, you may be on Waterfall project. <laughs> or if you have actually delivered software in the last 30 days, you may be on Agile project. So over the last couple of years, I had ample opportunity to watch Agile versus Waterfall projects, private sector versus public sector projects. So my quick introduction is, I work for Grant Thornton's public sector practice. I do IT advisory work. I lead sales and delivery in Sacramento office. And uh, when I say IT advisory, it's basically strategy and roadmaps, oversight assessments. And I've done a couple of assessments, large assessments in the town. One was for PSR project uh, at CalPERS. And then another one was my CalPays for SAP system. Probably heard of all those projects. Um, before IT advisory work, I've done three large modernization projects. So out of them, two were agile based projects, very successful agile projects. And on one of them, I was master scrum. Not scrum master, master scrum. <laughs> all right, so with that said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about lessons learned on agile projects as well as agile transformation for large organizations. And we learned these lessons very hard way, but the slides are gonna bring it to you in an easy way. So, before we get into the lessons learned, let's talk about how successful Agile has been. Agile is three times more successful than waterfall projects. Says who? You must have heard of Standish Group. They publish all project management uh, statistics. If you look at the left side, waterfall success rate is 14%. And on the right, agile success rate is 42%. The portion shown in green. That's exactly three times. So what are some of the successes of agile projects? You all heard of Mission to Mars from NASA, right? So there is a robot on the surface of land. The software developed for that was all created by 100% Agile. It's probably a very large initiative, about a million, billion dollars in that. So this project is basically monitoring Mars surface, it's controlling Mars surface, it's sending a lot of research uh, to the Earth, all done using Agile. So next time you see the cool pictures of Mars, think they were brought to you by Agile. <laughs> <laughs> the next couple of projects are my own projects. The first one was a huge legacy modernization, and uh, the project is uh, ran over about 10, 11 years for a very large organization. So the first four or five months were just product development using Agile approach. So we did everything using Agile, UX design. We did um, database, architecture, software, everything was doing Agile releases. And um, this was about the fourth largest insurer in the nation. They went live while their peers are still struggling, trying to modernize. The second project wasn't as big, but it was very complex, meaning we had a geographically dispersed teams in seven countries. Although the development team was in Russia, we had BAs, developers, testers in US, Belarus, Latvia, Lithuania, Australia, and we did the implementation in about two years. The last which is probably most relevant here, it's public sector, right? FBI Sentinel case management system. So in the town, we do a lot of case management systems, right? And this FBI spent $600 million over 10 years on two system integrators. They didn't go live. Finally, they brought the project in-house and they did agile delivery internal team. Delivered it in three years at fraction of a cost. 114 million. 
So these projects should dispel the myth that Agile doesn't work for large projects, Agile doesn't work for distributed environment, and Agile may not work for public sector. It does work for public sector. So with that said, I know the California journey has been only like one or two years in the Agile. So let's talk about what are the other states saying about Agile. So Grant Thornton does this uh, CIO survey which Scott referred to. We do it at the state level. So in all of the state CIOs are saying Agile is the future. They are saying 81% of the respondents are saying we'll implement Agile in one shape or form. So the same respondents, we asked them, what are the critical success factors for Agile projects, right? So what they said was, it depends on what kind of projects are doing Agile. It depends on customer involvement. Basically, how do you engage your business? Then talked about training. Then what kind of project management tools you use on Agile? And lastly, use of coaches, and what kind of tools we use. And of, because of course, we talked about the procurement. So these are the things that they are thinking will make Agile successful. And what we have done is basically group these themes into six lessons learned for Agile. So today I'll talk about the Agile transformation. I'll talk about Agile for big projects. Waterfall versus Agile, we always have that debate. Waterfall versus Agile. We're gonna talk about that. Then Agile metrics, can't measure it, can't manage it. Then how to build Agile workflows and the power of Agile. So without further ado, let me start with my first lesson learned. So Agile transformation is easier said than done. And you know, when you do it, the payoff is really tremendous. And you know, you look at these four lessons learned, basically what happens is the very first one here, in their enthusiasm to implement Agile, Many organizations, they implement mangled version of Agile or a mixed version of methodologies or medley of homegrown deliverables. For example, uh, we had one uh, client that 40 page specs, function specs, they call them stories. Another client, <laughs> another client had these production releases every week. They were doing incidents and they said, oh, we're doing Agile. So these are not examples of Agile. If you want to implement Agile, use some of the standard frameworks called Extreme, Scrum, AUP, Kanban. There are many standard frameworks to use them. The second one, you know, many times organizations implement Agile, but they skip some steps, They're not following Agile principles. I had a client, and uh, what they were, so basically the basic tenet of uh, Agile is test-driven development. You gotta test the software so that it's ready in that sprint. And one client was doing uh, development and they were throwing testing over the wall, meaning for next release to the next release to the next release. At the end, they had like nine month long system testing phase. So the self-governance of Agile comes from your sprint zero, which is planning sprint, and also doing retrospectives so you can self-correct. So if you are using Agile, follow the principles, and then the results are gonna follow you. The third point here is using tools. So when Agile started, they used to manage using whiteboards in Agile alleys. But the moment you scale Agile to 40, 50 people, you can't really use whiteboards, you need automation. So nowadays we have a lot of uh, productivity tools called Jira, version one, Rally. You can use these tools to not only look at the stories, but also uh, monitor those stories, report, collect metrics, and do a lot of stuff with these uh, tools. The last one, just because of all these issues, we really need experienced advisors in the room. Meaning, we need these coaches and experts so that they can guide you, so you can start with the right foot forward and stay the course of the Agile until you're successful. So, our next lesson learned. So let's say you are excited about Agile. How are you gonna get your project sponsor behind you? How are you gonna get the enterprise behind you? 
So, Agile has many mature frameworks which are well equipped for the enterprise level. So, what has happened over the last two decades? Agile has moved from developer alleys to executive suites. So, the old uh, developer dreamland of coding, coding, coding doesn't exist anymore. Agile is real, it's for business. So, first one, first lesson learned here is basically some of the old criticisms of Agile is no documentation, is no discipline, there is no leadership. All those has faded away. These mature frameworks like SAFE, SAFE stands for Scale Agile Framework, and LESS stands for Large Scale Scum. These Agile frameworks are basically for the enterprise level Agile transformation or Agile projects. So specifically on the SAFE, you start with your project executives at the top, you help them define the product vision, you help them define the product roadmap, and you use a tool called Epic. And then you go to the middle level. At the middle level, you talk to your senior management, and you define your release backlog, product backlog, release strength. So these are three to four months releases. And then finally, you go down to the development level, where you basically define your stories and sprints and the releases. So basically, you can scale and deploy Agile at the enterprise level. The next one, excuse me. So next point here is, Agile needs to be complemented with PMO for strong discipline. Okay, for all the reasons that I mentioned before, uh, let me give you an example. On one of the clients, they were doing Agile development for about four years. They had about 200 developers in Agile alleys cranking out code. They tried to go live two times, but they couldn't. The sponsors were getting impatient. So they brought in the system integrator to which I belonged, and I noticed the first thing. They were trying to go live. I found out the reason. They had only two person PMO managing 200, 300 people. So I immediately scaled the PMO to about 25 people, 25 PMs. So some PMs were scrum masters, some PMs were doing project management standards, reports, guidelines, some PMs were managing DevOps, and some PMs were basically managing cross-functional dependencies. So we, re so we see that as a recurring theme in a lot of our large projects at the federal level and state level, you need to have project management office. The last uh, lesson learned here is about software development life cycle and DevOps. So your developers may crank out the best working software. It may work in development environment, but you deploy it to production, it bumps. Or you may have a nice software, but it's getting delayed because it's not on the release. All these things can be fixed by DevOps. So you have to think around Especially when you have large projects, think of software development at a large scale. Especially when we're going to have this agile pool of vendors that we talked earlier. Each vendor is going to have his working software, right? He's going to need the environment to deploy that software. We're going to need many release planning. So all these things have to scale up when you have a big project. So basically what you have to do is engage your dev, dev, op, dev team with the ops team as well as your system admin team. They need to be involved continuously throughout the project life cycle. So for example, in the very beginning when you're doing the product visioning, the dev team should give non-functional requirements to your ops team. They should tell them about infrastructure specifications. Then you go to your, uh, define your releases, and in the releases, basically you should be giving them security requirements, your platform uh, specifications, and when you are doing actual development, you need the, this team to do the deployment and releases. So basically, you really need strong DevOps for the large projects. So, you got your uh, executives uh, behind you. How are you gonna convince your waterfall critics? How are you gonna handle them? Well, the good news is, just because Agile is here, waterfall is not dead. Just because we have cell phones, we're still using the landlines, right? So to use that same analogy, basically what happens is in these big projects, one division may use Agile, or we have an Agile of the big project, but it may have cross-functional dependencies. 
let's take uh, CWDS, right? We have this child welfare digital services. They have interfaces and work on the SOS system, or they need to build interfaces to the county, but they may be waterfall. So I faced this situation years ago. We had this, I was called into this burning dispute between two executives, and one executive was telling, hey, you never deliver any software. The other executive said, well, you keep changing the scope. You keep slapping CRs, how can I deliver? What I found out was their development teams were at loggerheads. The agile team was saying, we'll keep coding till the last day of the release. And the development team was, uh, waterfall team was saying, we can't start the coding because we haven't fixed the design yet. So we resolved this dispute by creating a high level design document. So when you have a high level design document, you are doing the handshake, so your systems are talking to each other. Then the agile teams can do their own stories. Waterfall guys can do their low level design document and everything was fine on that project. The next one, you know, Agile is very popular for product development. So when you're developing a product, special new product, you're innovating, you're defining requirements, you're testing the market, right? So some of the large projects in the states, they are similar. They have this huge long DDI phase. You heard of DDI, design, development, and integration? That is similar to this product development. So what they do is, they do have this long DDI phase, product development phase, and then they go live with one department. And that one department, but we have another 150 departments to go live. Or they go live for one county, and we have 57 counties to go live. Then the project enters this rollout phase, where you are rolling out to these departments or the counties. And when you are doing rollouts, you need to be predictable. You need to have certainty, because you're flipping the switch, thousands of users are impacted. So you need to have that certainty. So waterfall may be suitable for the rollout, and Agile is just good for product development. The next one is uh, blended methodologies. So this is a little bit technical, uh, going into the weeds. Uh, I had a strange symptom of one uh, uh, in one project. Uh, they couldn't close the technical stories uh, for three, four sprints. Right? Even if they would close, they would reopen. We asked developers what's going on, well, they said, well, we, there's not enough time. We don't have the big picture architecture. The system diagrams are missing. So how can we write the stories? So what we did was we did traditional style JAT sessions. And in these JAT sessions, you do current state. We talk about challenges. They drew a lot of diagrams. And they designed the future state over long design sessions. So ultimately, we basically ended up defining a rough style documentation, rational unified process. Um, and this was done only for like one work stream, interface work stream, which tends to be very complex with systems, diagrams, and all that. And 97% uh, of the project was still agile. Just little portion was rough. So nowadays, you hear all these uh, buzzwords like agile rough, agile waterfall. Have you heard of that? So these are basically exploiting the best features of agile, but tweaking slight, slightly for improving it on some of its efficiencies. All right, so now you have basically converted your waterfall critics into friends. What else do you need to be successful on Agile? You need people. You may have right processes and tools, but if you don't have the right people, you can't be successful. So people we divide into two areas. The internal people who are doing the Agile work itself, the Agile development, and also Agile management. And then also external folks uh, who are basically supporting the agile, like the procurement folks or the business owners. So let's talk about the lessons learned for internal. Uh, you know, at state, we have this aging workforce, and um, you know, they wish that they could uh, basically create a new generation of agile army. And you know, we can basically draw parallels from, uh, uh, from private sector and consulting world. I mean, I used to be a consultant most of my life. And what they do is basically they hire these young fresh college graduates and send them through this intensive training. It's like a boot camp. And in this, they learn all tools of the trade. They do simulation projects before they are on the real project. I think we can do something similar. We can start Agile Academy. Um, also, at one of my clients, they had an EPMO. And this EPMO had a mandatory training for the project managers. 
and this mandatory training they would not go on real project until they have done this all agile PMO tools kind of training. So, that is internal on the external basically the education of stakeholders who are going to support you on agile is very very important. So, what we did was one state specifically state of Washington they sent the whole procurement department for agile training. The idea was for them to get exposed to story points, most valuable products, so they could develop this agile mindset. Also, we are going to have business owners or business folks who are going to be product owners. They are going to have to work with the agile folks to approve the stories, uh, make some decisions. So, we can send the product owners to this CSPO training, Certified Scrum Master Product Owner training. And last and the most important aspect of this is really agile culture. So, there was a survey, there is a survey, annual survey done called State of Agile and what they found out was the reason fail, Agile initiatives fail is because of culture or change management. So, if you want to turn your organization into Agile powerhouse, then you need to have a clear vision that you really want to be Agile and you need to get your C-level suite behind you. And nowadays companies have come up with a new a C level spot called CAO. You heard of CAO? You heard of CISO, CISO, CDO, Chief Data Officer. CAO is Chief Agility Officer. <laughs> so, culture is very important. How you hire people, train people, and basically integrate them is going to make a big difference and uh, reduce the resistance. So, build that agile culture, have those foosball tables like Peter Kelly has, or have those uh, nice spaces like Paul Smith has, and celebrate agile successes. So, uh, our next lesson learned is about the uh, metrics. So, you got the waterfall colleagues behind you, uh, you are in the middle of agile projects and your sponsor, sponsor is asking, show me the money, show me the difference of agile. Fortunately, agile metrics are well suited for all of this. Uh, we have many metrics, but the basic unit of measure is the uh, story points. You can use story points to basically calculate all kinds of metrics. The number of uh, story points delivered in a sprint is called velocity, and that is a productivity measure. You can use that to also call the variance, the plant story points versus the actual story points. And you can track real progress. In the real progress, what I mean by that, as we heard, the SAFE framework can scale up to the enterprise level. So, we have these burn down charts. You heard of burn down charts? They are basically showing how many sp uh, stories have been burned. You can roll up the burn down charts to release level. You can roll it up to the product level. So, the executives can see how the road map is evolving uh, and they can find the real progress. And last but not least, uh, we can use uh, metrics uh, for continuous development. I had a story, but I'll skip it because uh, we don't have enough time. So, the last lesson learned is about Agile. Agile is not going to solve all the problems. So, the issues you have on Waterfall and Agile are going to be the same for large modernization projects. And the state of uh, the Department of Technology publishes this. Uh, Dirty dozens. Have you heard of dirty dozens? These are the problems faced by large modernization projects. So, the same problems are going to afflict agile projects too, but agile just deals with them better. So, let us take the first one for example, DPR, right? In many projects, they do not do effective DPR. What happens is they go to these design sessions and say, okay, we will build a new, new 2B process. They end up building new system for the old as is process. And agile is naturally suited for that. You can define your process and then test it into that sprint. If it does not work exactly, you can fine tune in the next sprint. So, requirements can change. Try doing that in waterfall, when they get slapped with a big CR from SI. Same thing with project management, uh, communication management, they are all very important. And that is why we said early on, PMO is a key component for your agile success. You need to have a strong project management office. And lastly, the requirements are testing are also very important. Just because we are doing agile does not mean these problems will not be there. If the product owner is not involved 
and uh, they are not giving right decision, the story quality will be bad and the testing will be bad. So, since we are out of time, let's do a quick recap here. So, if you are buzzed about agile, adopt agile and uh, follow the principles. Then scale the agile to enterprise level, help your product owners. Agile can coexist with waterfall, measure data and build the agile culture. And lastly, use the power of agile to fight dirty dozens. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>